Welcome back, it's Dr. Somji. Today we're going to be talking about an important ingredient within skincare. It's part of what I call the ACE formula. It's the C within ACE. It's vitamin C. So, what is vitamin C? Well, vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant. In life, we get exposed to oxidants, i.e. free radicals, essentially from a number of different things, from pollution to even sun damage. These things degrade the collagen within the skin, they break the skin barrier, leading you to sensitivities, pigmentation, fine lines, aging. Vitamin C counteracts that process. It stops that process and we know that because individuals that are low in vitamin C systemically have things like eczema, psoriasis, skin infections, prone to cancers, all of these nasty things can occur if you are low in vitamin C in your diet. So it makes sense to put vitamin C on the surface of your skin to get benefits. We've gone through some of the benefits of your skin. Reduces the appearance of fine lines in skin and also gives you that brighter, fresher glow and a better skin barrier. These are all things that we talk about every day on this skincare channel. What are the side effects of vitamin C? Well, to understand the side effects of vitamin C, I'm going to tell you something that most skincare videos do not tell you. And you've got to stay tuned for this because I'm going to tell you about probably, I'm going to tell you about the eight different types of vitamin C that you can find in skincare formulations today and tell you which ones are the best ones and also give you some examples of ones that you can use specific for your skin type because we all have we all use specific retinols for our skin types but we don't use specific vitamin C's for some reason vitamin C is just vitamin C but there are so many differences within it and we're going to go through them What's the most common type of vitamin C that we see within our formulations? It's called L-ascorbic acid. Everyone knows that L-ascorbic acid is highly unstable. This is the reason why all vitamin C should be in an airtight container. None of this open tops and, and droppers and things like that. If it is in something like that, it needs to be in a dark formulation because UV rays will oxidize that and damage the vitamin C. If you have an antioxidant such as vitamin C and it becomes oxidized, suddenly that vitamin C does the exact opposite of what it's supposed to do. It ends up damaging skin. So you can end up with sensitivity, worsening pigmentation, worsening acne if you're not careful with your vitamin C. And that's why any L-ascorbic acid formulation has to be stabilized appropriately. One of my favorite ones is the Drunk Elephant one because obviously it's, it stabilizes in a good formulation. There's some good packaging that doesn't damage it, that doesn't allow the environment to damage it, and it stays stable for a longer period of time. How do you know your vitamin C has gone bad, your L-ascorbic acid? Well, it's very simple. If it's no longer clear, if it's starting looking a little bit orangey, a little bit darker, even worse, brown, then you really shouldn't be putting that on your skin. You're gonna be doing the opposite of what vitamin C does. Second type of vitamin C that we see is ascorbic acid polypeptide. So this is a water-soluble derivative of L-ascorbic acid. And I find that sometimes it can be irritating and sensitive to skin. So it used to be in some earlier formulations, but you don't really see it now. Um, so it's not, really, it's not really seen too much. Ascorbyl glucosamine. So adding glucosamine, an amino acid, to ascorbyl um, helps it become better for pigmentation. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but there's not been so much research on this. I've seen it as in skincare ingredients when I've been formulating my own skincare, but um, I haven't ever seen good evidence uh, as to whether it's actually good for pigmentation, but every single product brochure um, of this ingredient says it is, but there's no empirical evidence. Not that I know of anyway. Um, Ascorbyl glucoside is uh, very, very popular now. You've got the ordinary ascorbyl glucoside, I think it's 12%, um, and it's very, very popular, mainly because if you have sensitive skin or you've previously been sensitive to L-ascorbic acid, then you can use ascorbyl glucoside, and it's great for sensitive skin, and it's one of my recommendations. Ascorbyl palmitate. So, again, another formulation 
that is extremely interesting. I see it in a lot of new formulations, but from what I've seen, it's not a stable formulation. So it needs to be an airtight container and it needs to have a lot of, it needs to have a good stability mechanism um, within the ingredients list to make sure that it's active and it works appropriately. One uh, type of vitamin C that I've been really um, kind of excited about is um, one that actively fights free radicals. So magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, the addition of magnesium within this area will make sure that it fights free radicals. So in its inherent state, it's naturally stable. So if there's some oxidative stress, so oxygen getting into the area and damaging the vitamin C, it will fight it. And you can get the ordinary ascorbyl um, phosphate, which is fantastic again. And it's if you're gonna be using vitamin C here and there within your regime and you want it to sit on your shelf for a little bit longer and still be active, then that's what you're gonna to wanna to buy. If you have acne, if you have inflammation, sodium ascorbyl phosphate is what you need because that's the only vitamin C that I've seen that's got great evidence for reducing inflammation, reducing redness, what we call erythema within the skin. So if you've got sensitive skin and acne prone skin, sodium ascorbyl phosphate is quite good. And the face theory do a 20% version, which I recommend. The last one, which is a bit of a tongue twister, is tetrahexyl dexyl ascorbate. Um, now, uh, this had, when it came out, I remember, I remember the launch of, um, I think it was Illumia Everactive Vitamin C. And they took me to an event and they said, look, Somji, you've got to give your patients this because this vitamin C is the most stable vitamin C and it penetrates the skin barrier better than any other vitamin C. Um, and you don't need to worry about the oxidative, um, uh, essentially destroying the vitamin C as you do with uh, l ascorbic acid. Um, and essentially it stays good for a long period of time rather than just for the first two weeks. So I was really excited about it. Um, and actually with, with the Lumia Everactive Vitamin C, patients didn't really like it because it did irritate the skin a little bit. Um, so it was too inflammatory. Um, for whatever reason, looking at the ingredients list. But the ones that I recommend, the Ordinary do a great one, uh, the scoreboard tetrahexadal um, uh, palmitate, um, which if from what I see over here is um, in 20%. And actually, uh, a lot of patients like that because again, it's something that can sit on the shelf for a long period of time. If you don't quite need vitamin C, but you just need that little bit of a boost every now and again, it can be added into your regime really easily. I like this product because it can be mixed with uh, some of the hyaluronic acid serums for added effect as well. Um, but like I said, most products have l ascorbic acid and they're quite nice sophisticated systems in terms of packaging as well as the ingredients list that support and stabilize that type of vitamin C. Hopefully you've got an example of what is good for your skin type. I'll summarize that in the description below. Um, and uh, yes, vitamin C, like I said, can be combined with a number of different ingredients um, to ensure uh, that uh, essentially you get synergistic effects. So you can combine this vitamin C with vitamin E with no problem. You can use vitamin C in the day and you can use a vitamin A at night. I wouldn't recommend combining vitamin C with any AHAs or BHAs mainly because it can help, it, it may degrade the vitamin C and reduce its effectiveness. But uh, it's a simply used uh, serum that you can just cleanse your face, dry your skin, apply your vitamin C, then apply things for your skin barrier afterwards, such as moisturizers and then sunscreen. Um, personally, I think it's so common now, vitamin C, that uh, really you should be also, it should be mixed with your sunscreen as well. Um, so I think, you know, I like to see new products with vitamin C within the sunscreen because some people don't have many skin issues. So they can just wash their face, have a sunscreen, a chemical sunscreen that's moisturizing with all good actives and things for your skin barrier in there and with vitamin C. And that could just be a two-step routine. Um, and that, I think there's a big demand for that. So if there's any types of vitamin C that you think I haven't talked about, which I don't think they are, <laughs> just let me know in the comments below. If there are any specific vitamin C products you want me to speak about, then also put that in the comments below. And if you subscribe, then, you'll be, then we'll let you know whether those answers have been answered.